Okay, so for today's quiz review, this is quiz number five, so we are in week five right now. Um, remember, your homework is going to be due tomorrow, and I should hopefully have your homework from last week all entered by today, I hope, if not by tomorrow for sure. I did put in all your Alex scores already. Okay, so that's in there already. Um, so today we're going to start off uh, going through our review. Now, the first questions we're going to do are those graph questions. Okay, remember, we did some graphing questions that were um, uh, based on rational expressions, okay? So uh, here's example number one, or just put number one here. So I'm going to graph the functions. Now, uh, we'll start with just this one right here. If I give you something like, uh, let's say this, negative 2 over x minus 3. Okay? Now, I do want to remind you guys of the formula that you're supposed to kind of see here. That's a over x minus b plus c. Remember, the a term, if it's positive, the graph will look normal. What does a normal graph look like? Well, I'm going to kind of draw normal and flipped for you guys, okay? So the normal graph will look like this. The flipped graph will look like this, okay? So I just put normal here, and this is flipped. This is if you have a positive A term and a negative A term, okay? So this is all in your notes, but just in case, it, it, I'm going to just put it there for you guys. Um, so as you can tell, my problem here, f of x equals to negative 2 over x minus 3, my graph is going to be flipped, okay? But now... I also have to know about my horizontal and vertical asymptotes, okay? So your vertical asymptote is your B value, but if you remember, the B value is always opposite, right? So um, let me create my uh, little graph here for us. I'll make it green. Sorry about that. Um, All right, so there's uh, my coordinate plane. Nothing too special, just just enough to fit the graph. All right, now my B value is my vertical asymptote. Again, this is in your notes. This is in my notes. You can look them up anytime you want. But the B value is my vertical asymptote. But remember, B is not what it looks like. My B value here looks like a minus 3, right? So B is always the opposite sign of it. So that's a positive 3. So I'm going to go to positive 3 on my, on my X axis and draw a vertical asymptote, okay? That's because of the number down here, okay? This minus 3 is really a plus 3. So I go to the X axis and I draw a vertical line right there. My horizontal asymptote is my C value, but my C value is not there. That means it's zero. So I'm going to go to my Y axis and draw a horizontal line where Y equals zero. Okay. So now I have to draw my graph flipped, right? I got to draw a flip because it's a minus in front. Minus 2, right? It's a minus. So i got to flip it. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to draw it right here like this. And notice I am using the whole graph and like this. And there's my graph. Remember when we did these for homework uh, and when I did these in the class, we didn't really do any math per se. Like we weren't calculating things. We just kind of were observing and based on what we saw, we drew a picture, okay? And that's pretty much all you have to do. All this extra stuff that I wrote over here, it, it's not something you have to do. It's something you should know, right? But it's not something you have to do. So I'm just putting it there. That way, when you guys are kind of looking at it, um, it gives you a little hint as to which way the graph should look. So that's our first one. Let me draw one more, and then uh, I'll check to see if you guys have any questions on it. Um, Again, I'm drawing the, or I'm giving you these problems very similar to the stuff uh, that you guys should be seeing on your um, on your tests. Okay. 
and we'll do a um, we'll do a plus one. So these are all similar. You have four of these questions, okay? Two of them will be flipped. Two of them will be normal, okay? So that's why I'm doing one that's normal right now. So let me uh, create a coordinate plane here for us. Again, you guys will have a picture thing for you to draw already. You won't have to worry about drawing one. So there we go. All right. Notice my A term is positive. That means, like I said, this is going to be a normal graph. Okay. Um, where is my vertical asymptote? Where do I draw a vertical line? What letter represented my vertical asymptote? Sorry? My X. But that's on my X axis. But what I mean is, remember how it was A, B, C? Right, A is here, B is there, C is here. This is A, B, C. Which one of those letters told me the vertical line? We just did one. B, right? So B says positive 2, so I really have to go to negative 2. Because remember, B is always telling you the opposite value. So there we go. We already used B. And then to find the horizontal asymptote, we use C. But we use the actual value we see for C. It's not trying to trick us. Only B is always tricky. C is always whatever it tells you. So right here, positive 1 on the y-axis. Okay? So here it is. All right. And then we're basically done. Once we draw the guidelines, I just got to know what kind of graph to draw. It's going to be normal because uh, the fraction in front is positive. So I'm just going to draw the following. This and that. And that's it. I'm done. Remember, uh, if you want, I'll put these notes up on the, on the problem above just to remind you guys. Um, and I'll do that right now. Let me just give you a couple more seconds to draw this if you're drawing it. But remember, the B value is your vertical asymptote. So on the, whatever the B value is, you're going to go to your X axis and draw a vertical line at that number. And then... Your C value, your number that's just hanging out by itself, that's your horizontal asymptote. So you're going to go to your y-axis, find that number, and draw a horizontal line straight across. Those are your guidelines. Once you have your guidelines, you just draw your picture. It's either going to look like this, or it's going to be flipped like that one, right? So it just kind of depends. So let me just write this for you guys here. I might as well. It doesn't hurt. Remember, B is vertical asymptote okay or let me write opposite opposite of b is vertical asymptote right because whatever b is you're going to do the opposite so for us right here it was minus three so i went to positive three and drew a vertical line right so the opposite of b is a vertical asymptote c is the horizontal asymptote okay Notice, not opposite of C, actual C, okay, whatever C is. In our case, it was zero, so I kept it at a horizontal line at zero. I'm going to move on from these, but if you want to see more, if I finish early, I don't know, we'll see if I do, uh, I can do more, okay? They don't take long to do. It's easy to generate new ones, but if you want to see more, we can do more. Or get your homework, right? Look at your homework that you guys have and review it, and by review, I mean redo Right? In math, review is redo. That's basically the way you review, is you redo the homework. So um, no other way to really study for math. You're not really supposed to memorize stuff. Math is based on you doing stuff and learning how things are done so that when we change it a little, you still know how to do it. Right? Um, Memorization is not good. For history class, sure, because history in the past doesn't change anything. Right? So you can memorize that, remember it forever. But math changes. So all right. Let's go to number two here. And um, these are going to be those word problems. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you the word problems from the quiz. I'm just going to change the numbers for us. Okay? 
So, and then I'm going to write down the information that's important. So, right here it says, Christian can correct a stack of papers in six hours. So, I'm going to write, uh, let me reread that again. Christian can correct papers in six hours. So, let me write Christian, and it takes him, uh, I don't even know if it's him or her, actually, they don't mention, but, because that, that could be both. Um, six hours. Okay, to great. Next one. Victor can correct them in three hours. So Victor takes three hours. Okay. Um, how long does it take them to correct the papers together? Okay, so how long does it take them to correct the papers together? So again, this is a question from your quiz. I'm just changing the numbers. And on your quiz, it'll be something different. Okay, so here we go. Remember our formula for this stuff, okay? T equals to, someone's ringing like crazy. Make sure you guys put that on silent and put it up there. This is our formula, right? T equals to XY over X plus Y. So let's let Christian be the six hours, let that be X. And Victor be the three hours, let that be Y. Okay? So let's plug it into our formula. They want the total amount of time. So it's going to be 6 times 3 over 6 plus 3. Right? I just plugged in X and Y. That's all. So T is equal to 18 over 9. So T is equal to two hours. So if it takes one six hours and one three hours, if they do it together, it takes them two hours. These are pretty easy problems. You gotta know the formula though, okay? Um, you gotta know the formula. You're gonna get one question like this, then you're gonna get one other question that's a little different, okay? Which by the way, you know what I failed to write down right here? Um, the question was total together, right? So total together, my bad on that. But this was the main question that I had to figure out. Like how long does it take them to figure it out together? So that's how I knew I had to solve for T. All right, so that was gonna be one question. So again, the problem said that Christian could grade papers in six hours, Victor can grade papers in three hours. How long does it take them to do it together? I assign the X and the Y value to one and another person times, right? Plugged it into the formula, simplified, I got my total time. Pretty straightforward, okay? Now, there's going to be another problem like this. But instead of them, um, all right, so number three, we said Tina takes two hours. Together, one hour. Okay, so how long does it take Maya? All right, so I mean, I don't have to write the whole statement. So again, they're mowing lawns. Tina mows a lawn in two hours. Together, they do it in one. How long does it take Maya? So, T is equal to XY over X plus Y. Now, I know that I can assign X to Tina, and the together time, that's big T, right? So, I got to figure out Maya, which is going to be Y. So, 1 is equal to 2Y over 2 plus Y. Now I'm going to have to multiply. Remember, with these, you always multiply this over. So this is 1 times 2 plus y equals to 2y. If you multiply 1 into 2 plus y, you just get 2 plus y. So this is 2 plus y equals to 2y. Now, if I subtract y from both sides... I get 2 is equal to y. So it takes Maya 
two hours. Which makes sense. If it takes me two hours and you two hours and together we'll do it in half the time. Right? Because we, we work at the same rate. So it should usually be half the time. So that makes sense. Two hours for Maya, two hours for Tina, one hour together. That makes perfect sense. All right, so you're going to have one question like this on your quiz as well. So one of them where you got to solve for T, one of them where you got to solve for X or Y, whichever letter you choose, okay? So one of the problems, you'll know the together time and one person's time. The other one, you'll know both people's times. Are we okay with these first four so far? Because the rest of them are all the square root stuff that we just did yesterday, okay? So... Let me put right here example number or number three, number four here. Okay, and we're just going to simplify. And we'll do a couple of these. So get out of here at 24. So I got 14 minutes. All right. So we'll start off easy. There are some easy problems here. So it's not like they're all difficult. Okay, so I'm kind of looking and there's some in here that are kind of easy. Square root of 18. Now remember, there's that list of radicals that hopefully you guys are kind of getting used to seeing here. Uh, the square root of 18 though. Uh, there is no square root of 18. There's a square root to 16, there's a square root to 25, but there's no, no square root in between. Um, but I can rewrite 18 as what times what? One of them has to have a square root, the two things you give me. What times what is 18? 2 and 9, right? 2 times 9, and 9 has a square root, so that can come out. The square root of 9 is 3, radical 2, and you're done. Okay? Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Okay? I'm going to do one more like this, and then we're going to move on to some with letters. The cubed root of negative 32. Cubed root of negative 32. Now, if you go to your cubed root list, we had a cubed root of 1, cubed root of uh, 8, 27, 64, and 125. Those are the five that I listed. Those cubed roots, right? That was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And remember, you can find positives and negatives for both. There was no cubed root of negative 32. But what can I divide 32 by that has a cubed root? Like what times what can I write this as? And one of those two numbers that you're thinking of will have a cubed root. 4 and 8. Now I'm going to write negative 8 and 4. Okay? Because we can have cube roots of negative numbers. What's the cube root of a negative 8? Well, 2 would be the positive, so negative 2 would be the, the answer for this. And we're done with that one. Because there's no cube root to 4. Okay? There's no cube root to 4. So we're done. Again, these are what we would consider the easier problems. You have four of these types okay someone asked me well can i just use a calculator i mean you could but i would like to see the work it'd be good if at least you show me the breakdown and then let the calculator do the work for you um but yeah calculators are sophisticated enough to do these uh, you should be okay what they're not sophisticated enough not all calculators is to do the next sets okay so um let me give you a part C here. And I'm trying to think. So here's kind of one that's a little bit tough. Not not because of the variable, but because of that number. So we got to think like, what times what is 320? Um, 
And one of those things has to have a square root. So remember how I told you we had all these square roots, right? Uh, what was the biggest one that we had? The square root of 256. So if you were to have your calculator, 320 divided by 256 does not fit. So then we went down. 225 was the next biggest one. 320 divided by 225 doesn't fit, right? And I'm going down some more. So what was the next one? 196. 320 divided by 196 does not work. Again, this is the list that we wrote yesterday, okay? So this list right here. So I already did the 256, the 225, 196. I can't divide 320 by 169. I can't divide it by 144. It doesn't get divided by 121. Again, you'll have a calculator. If you're like, how the heck am I supposed to know? 320 divided by 121, right? You're going to do that. You're just going to calculate. So um, 320 cannot be divided by 100 nor by 81, but 320 can be divided by 64. Okay, um, 64 times 5, right? Yeah, 64 times 5. So let me go back. And again, this is why it's important that you have a calculator because you're going to want it to, to help you do this. So 64 times 5. Now, what's my index on this square root? A 2. If you don't see it, it's a 2. Now, why did I write that? Because I want to factor out my v to the fourth. And that means that my variable, the power has to match the index. v to the fourth, I can write it as v squared, v squared. Because 2 plus 2 is 4, right? The powers add up to 4. That means that my index matches my powers. That means that they get to come out. The 64 is going to come out. And these two V's are going to come out. So the square root of 64, that's 8. And then a V and another V come out. So let me just put right here times V times V. Square root of, what's left? Just a 5. So this is 8 V squared, square root of 5. 8 V squared, square root of 5. Yeah, 320 is a big number, but guys, you have a calculator. Use it, right? Don't just struggle and like, I don't know what to divide 320 by. I mean, just start with bigger numbers, right? Numbers that you know that have square roots. 100, 81, 64, 25, 49, right? Those numbers have square roots. Try dividing by those. Because if one of those works, like 64, then perfect. We can use that to help us do the work, okay? So... That's one of them that's kind of on the tougher side. Let me check to see what else they give you. Okay, so they're going to have some stuff with multiple variables, but not a lot. So, so let me give you one more. Okay, I'm going to give you one more that's uh, with multiple variables. And none of these are cubic, so that's good. They're all square roots. Be our last one and we have we have six minutes left so all right um two numbers that multiply to 32 and one of them should have a nice square root sixteen and two right sixteen and two good now my index here is a two so my x to the fifth, I want to break it down to powers of 2. So that's x squared, x squared, x. That's x to the fifth right there. Okay, 2, 2, and 1, right? I'll put the 1 there for us. 2, 2, and 1. And then I have a y squared. So the index matches this power, this power, and that power. That means three letters are leaving. The x to the first is going to stay there. Okay. Let me drag out what needs to come out. So that 16 is leaving, this x is leaving, this x is leaving, this y is leaving. So it's 3 times, the square root of 16 is 4, times x times x times y. Square root of what? What's left? 2 and 
and an x okay two and an x those are still there that's why i draw lines from them, it's easier for you to identify things that don't have lines didn't go okay so all right this is 12 x squared y square root of 2x if you can do all this stuff your quiz is pretty solid okay like this is the hardest looking question on the on the quiz that's d okay it's very similar to that okay so i mean if you can do that no problem you should be fine with all eight of those radical problems if you can do uh right now i'll come back to it but if you can do these problems i know i didn't write the whole story but i gave you the information if you can do these using that formula you should be good and the graphs they're not hard to do you just got to know where to look right but if you can do those you should be pretty solid